I'll just ask it like this. Can anybody beat the Suns? No. The Bucks. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, the Bucks. I know the Bucks, the Bucks did it Bucks last only... year, but Chris Paul is back already. We were talking about on this on this pod, I don't know, three weeks ago, whatever it was, Chris Paul wasn't expected to be back until maybe the start of the playoffs. He's already back. So yeah. that team, like. And they're a machine without him. Without like, him, yeah. It's Chris Paul, bro. Like, one of the greatest clutch players in NBA history. Never turns the ball over, always gets to his spots. He always makes the right play. And they continue to roll people, man. And I was thinking about this today. I'm glad you brought the Suns up. Like, we're having all these MVP discussions right now because, you know, it's it's coming down to the wire. And D-Book had 49 against Denver. And everyone's like, oh, why not D-Book for MVP? And it's – yeah, I always I struggle because you know how important Chris Paul is yet they continue to roll without him, right? It's kind of like the Grizzlies and Jaw. Mm -hmm. Like yep. everyone... They, I have they that all, written down too. Yep. They all say that, of course, they can't win a title without them. But these teams continue to roll, and I always get so caught up because, to me, MVP, most valuable is hard. It's hard to gauge. It's hard and to like, quantify, yeah. Right. The one thing people want to use is what happens to your team when you are not there. And it's and that's but it's like should we right and it's like should we punish Chris Paul or Devin Booker or whomever for the Suns being a damn good team even when they're not it's like it's such an interesting fact okay. and, and conversation yeah, to they're be acting like that James I personally Jones really needs struggle MVP. with right yeah, yeah. okay I, I love this I love this topic right here I haven't heard this discussed before I want to I want to see I want to let you guys. Like almost sort this through on your own. Like break this down. Like why? Why is it that you feel? And I believe I'm. I'm with you. I agree. And I, I just don't really know how to quantify it myself. Why is it that when weighing the MVP race, what your team does without you shouldn't be accounted for? Can you explain that? Um, uh, I, I don't know. I don't think it. Hmm. I don't think it's it hard, totally man. should be. It's hard yeah. to measure, right? I know it's, I, that's not a fair question to put y'all on the spot. I apologize for that, but like it's it's a no, tough question to answer, and it's, it's a, I haven't heard it. It's asked, a piece of the so. pie. It's a piece yeah. of the pie for sure. because it's almost as if right now, if you gave the Nuggets right, so we can talk about Jokic all we want, correct? We can talk mm -hmm. about Jokic always amazing, but they're what the sixth seed right now. Were they not uh, just the one or two I with Jamal Murray? Out of the plan. I think they're they are a sixth seed. Plan. I'll double check. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they're the sixth seed. But the with Jamal game, Murray, he he's out. Oh, Chris, bring the mic closer to your face. I'll cut it out. Gotcha. It's gotcha. fine. Gotcha. Um, but <laughs> there we go. with with Jokic and no Jamal Murray, they're a six seed. But with Jamal Murray, they're one of the top seeds in the in the West. So do we give right. Jamal Murray credit for that? So then mm. you, you take in account even things like when Embiid's out with the 76ers, most of the time him and Harden are both missing time. So it's almost Correct? like reverse psychology kind of. Is what you're saying. Exactly. It's as if, yeah. like, just because they're not playing, the roster isn't good. It's as if we have to – do you have to make that roster better or you're not the most valuable player when, in fact, the GM for the Grizzlies just happened to put together an immaculate roster and he's getting mm. no credit. So we want to shit on GMs when they don't have good rosters, but we want to give the players credit when they have great rosters. It makes no sense to me. It makes yep. no sense. And there's really not an answer to your question, honestly. Even like yeah. the LeBron years, or LeBron would have won every MVP while he was in Cleveland every single right. year. Because even with Kyrie, when he was out, I think that's, they that's were 6-18. That's and good 18. context. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Even when yep. LeBron was out, they were 6-18 and 18 with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love for two years. Because he didn't miss that many games. But th there's really no answer to that question. It's just that media narrative thing that I always talk about on my podcast, which pisses me off. And it's mm -hmm. like, it, I think everyone, you know, as we've gotten more analytics-based, plus minus, to me, Sands, like, has become one of the most, like, talked about stats in pro basketball. Like it Kills me. Everyone obsesses over plus minus. Even I and become that like, guy. <laughs> right, like you do at times because it matters. Like, Sick what product your of your environment, doing? man. Like, what is your team yeah. doing when you're off the court? Like, I think Jokic has the best differential. At some point a couple weeks ago, they were like a plus 10 per 100 possessions when he was on and a minus 10 when he was off. Like, that's a t 20 points. Humongous like, gap. That's, yeah, that's massive. But it's like, like 
I understand. Yes, it's because Jokic is amazing. Obviously, the guy's ridiculous. He's averaging absolutely what, like 26, 14, and eight on like 57 percent. Like that guy's stupid. He went for 34, 12, and eight tonight on like 90 percent shooting. Like the guy's a freak. Definition of like, stat sheet stuffer. He's amazing. So exactly. we he's a bum. But I, real quick, Landon, like I, feel like that, I <laughs> he's I, a bum. <laughs> I always go back to I always go back to the Toronto series. I always I, I can never stop going back to the series. He always brings up Joe Wells Toronto series. Go ahead. Always. Say the plus minus. Uh, yeah, numbers. emotional emotional scars. God damn. <laughs> we'll hear this. We'll have 50 episodes and he will say this 47 out of the 50. Like, <laughs> go ahead. All, go they ahead. Lost, they lost the they lost game 7, dog. Listen to me. They lost game 7 Listen by to me. Listen. Listen. To me. They lost game seven by two points on one of the craziest shots I've ever seen in NBA history. <laughs> and the team was a Three minus thousand. the team was a minus ten or twelve in the two minutes. The two minutes that Embiid was off the floor, bro. Two minutes. Mm. And so to the plus to tie this back into the plus minus argument, the guy that was taking his place was Greg Monroe. Now, how much is it that an MVP caliber player like Embiid Greg drives? Monroe? Drives how good the team is, or does it become no? Just like how bad is your who, backup? Who is his like, replacement? Is yeah, right. yes. Who's your replacement, so dude? So that's I'm great. always fascinated. Like good uh, teams get punished for having spot not, on. You can't replace him, B. But good teams get punished for having quality depth in the plus minus column. Like if if the Nuggets had a capable backup center, maybe the numbers don't look as crazy. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. That's something. In terms of Boogie's coming with. along. In terms of and Boogie's coming along, along right now. Just, yeah. yeah, yeah, but that's recent. Yeah, it's been that's fun to see recently. him healthy again. I, I love that. I love their bench mob. Back. Their bench mob has been winning them games the last week, yes. week and a half. Like straight up, they just have. Yeah. Yep. So okay. we're we're all on the same page. Any of us would bet against. The question was, can anybody beat the Suns? Right. We had. We didn't talk we, about it. Let's none of us would that. bet against them. I do want to get the. I do want to. I do want to drop this one. Yeah. Stat that I heard, they're, by they're the way, and then I'll let y'all take it. The last time, the last time that a team finished in first place in their conference with by a double digit or more margin was the 2000 2001 uh, LA Lakers, and that's what we're that's what we're dealing with right now with the Suns. And so we we know how good those Lakers teams were, how stacked the they were. Yes, yeah, yes, the yeah. I think they I think they went uh, fifteen and was or that, sixteen and one. one? And it took six, a, a, yeah. an Allen Iverson fifty ball to get the one off him. You know? <laughs> that was like, their one yeah. loss in that. Yeah. 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 So, so right with back. the Suns, uh, to get to the Suns, I think that the land the stat that Landon just said they're not a very... bubble team anymore. Before you dive in, like, the, oh like yeah, we gotta no. we gotta stop this, man. Like they are, yeah, they have sixty wins, bro. Yeah, and that's what I was about wins. to say is that this. This isn't looked at as that Kobe and Shaq team because they don't have I would say Devin Booker and Chris Paul are superstars by skill, not by publicity. I always talk about superstars. There is multiple facets to being a superstar. There For is sure. the the publicity, the media coverage, plus your skill. You get what I'm saying? So without without those big names per se, even though Devin Booker and Chris Paul are pretty big names if you watch NBA every day. But even the casual fan, if you ask him about Devin Booker, like be honest. If you ask the casual fan about Devin Booker, I don't know if they know who you're exactly talking about, to be honest. They know who Chris Paul is. I don't know if they know who Devin Booker is, but then you get down to the depth of the team. Talked about this on my podcast. Dude, they have Bro, so, they have so many campaign good, like, real goes in. Players, He's amazing. Mikel Bridges is amazing. Jay Crowder is fantastic in his role. DeAndre Ayton is one of the best young players, not young centers, one of the best young players in the NBA. The only team that can match up with them, matchups. Playoffs are not about who has the better team. Playoffs are always about matchups. Yep. Just like if, if like the Heat see the Raptors, I'm pretty scared because they match up very well with us. Raptors it's not that they're better. Too. I think that they have great matchups with length and athleticism. With the with the Suns, there is nobody that matches up with them in any single series. Not there, one. Like not to a your point, single one. To your point, man, like the two minutes and beads off the floor. Like the Phoenix is gonna be able to steal every single minute. You know what I mean? Like they are gonna be able to field 
the every best team on the drop floor of at the all juice. Time. And when games every are drop. games come down to one, one, two possessions in the playoffs, they don't they don't give away any possessions. They're always going to have a competent five out there, and that's what like normally you know depth shrinks in the playoffs. Guys go to seven. Eight man rotations probably max. Not with them. Yeah. Phoenix legit has like nine dudes who need to be in the rotation at all times. Like yes. that's that right like there, I think, is the key. Team, that that's that's what I think makes them unbeatable. Is right. The, and it's the, like the depth that they have. I saw a stat today. I gotta bring up my Sixers. Like they're they're plus twenty two or plus twenty four per one hundred possessions with our starters, which is like world breaking. Like we're yeah. beating the brace off dudes. But what happens in the six minutes? When you got Shake Milton and Furkan Korkmaz running the show out there, and DeAndre mm. Jordan running, doing freaking this, cardio on the this damn court. dude and Korkmaz, like, have like what fucking... happens? You know what I mean, though. Yeah. Like Phoenix is able to steal those minutes. It doesn't so matter you... how good your starters are unless they can give you forty-eight minutes, literally a game. You gotta have not, some depth. Is there not a way to stagger that? What do you mean, stagger what? Stagger your stars. In a way that yeah. you don't have a seven-minute stretch of Doc shaking. Doc doesn't turkey. know. He literally they, has never seen the word stagger in the de- in the right. dictionary before, he, though. He's he he hasn't. So he's why? Got it. That's why they're going to be able to stagger now. Like he, they've been running, and he's been experimenting with it a lot. But they've been running, and Bede will play, and Harden will check out like the six-minute mark in the first quarter, as well as Tobias Harris. So right now, I think Doc's playoff rotation is going to be Maxi with Joel, and then James Harden with Tobias. But you're Tyrese still talking Maxie about with, with Embiid and Tobias Harris and, with James Harden. Okay. Because the, yeah. the idea is they still need a point guard who can actually physically dribble a basketball while James Harden's on the bench, which I don't know if you guys know Philly's history for the last 10 years. They just don't <laughs> have guards who can dribble the ball and, and shoot. It's the last so it's 10 like, years. And, but you're still talking about Embiid and Tobias Harris coming off the court. Like you, you cannot play all your starters at all times. You know what I mean? Those two guys are going to be George Niang who's a hell of a shooter, but physically limited, probably can't guard me. And one of like Shake or Korkmaz. And like when you stack up our six and seven versus Phoenix's Cam Johnson and, and campaign, like we get crushed. Like Landon, you're going to win those six, seven, eight battles with every team in the NBA. To your so. point, Landon, the staggering the, the stars. So there's teams like the Heat where – you have to play Jimmy Butler and Bam, just like I would say Luka Doncic. They don't have a secondary star. Those guys right. must see extended minutes because, like we just said, with your replacement, there is a dramatic drop in talent. So those yeah. guys, Jimmy Butler Naturally. now towards the end of the season, isn't even playing 12 minutes to start the game. He's playing 12 to 16. You're talking about a man that's playing two and one-thirds of a quarter or one and one-thirds of a quarter to start a game because the dramatic drop-off to Caleb Martin to hobbled yeah. peg leg Victor Oladipo. God, <laughs> mm. the the drop-off in those things is so dramatic that you don't really – not that you don't trust those guys. You can't trust those guys to hold a lead, to continue – to fight back when you're down eight. Imagine if the Heat or or let's say the Mavericks. Imagine the Mavericks are down nine ending the first quarter. They're down nine to anybody they play. Luke is going out there for the first three minutes. Yep, He's going to go on game, that like, court in the reach. first three minutes. You have to, or you may get outscored by nine to ten in those three minutes, and the game is over. And over. Just so like that's that clarify, different. And just to clarify, and the like, Suns don't it, have – they have drop off, but those guys know their role and they're so good and they are a machine that just moves on offense. Their That's individual the defenders doesn't... are premium and their team premium that there is no real drop off. Yeah, it none. doesn't feel like they're waiting for their starters to enter the game. Like and and no man Sands, Sands isn't knocking the maps at all. Like this is Oh no, I I totally don't understand like, that. This is literally yeah. what happens with every team, not name the Phoenix Suns. Yeah, like, literally. No, I get that. That's what, for that's sure. what makes them different. Like they're in their own tier because it that was my right. point. Like Everyone one of thirty-one or one of thirty-two. Yeah. It's them, right? Like, yeah. they, like campaign knows exactly what the hell he's doing when he goes out there, and so do the other four guys that he shares the court with. Like, and, they're the one yeah. team the, where all their roles are intact. They have the same team from last year, and their players have gotten better. Bridges got better. Cam Johnson got way better. Cam Johnson got way better. He said he should be forty-five percent. He can and actually drive, and he's got he's <laughs> got some. 
pump fake, like, you know, a couple dribbles to the hoop. And he's playing good defense now. He's not just like you can't attack him. Even if yeah. he could, he's still a six eight wing with some length. Like, they just have kind of some interchangeable pieces, man, and, and the train keeps rolling. So, the thing with, first thing question with the, that, that you pose, man, I, it's it's Phoenix and then the field right now for me. Yeah. So, you know, pinning back to the maps here, team. before we get – right, because they did it last year. So, I mean, until – until further notice, they're still technically big man on campus, right? And but people forget, like it took Giannis went nuts and Middleton went nuts. Phoenix was up two zero, like y'all remember, like Phoenix yeah. was up two zero last year. I was hearing Sweet talk right in my now. office. I was. Hearing I, I actually talk forgot. About I actually forgot that they were two and zero. It sans okay. So he he touched on the maps. I wanted to spend a couple minutes on on them. It just like the way. So he's right. They don't they don't have that secondary star, right? It's in a way that does make me nervous because they don't kind of have that that guy that we've seen that can do it in the playoffs to to give the ball to and say, "Hey, go get us a bucket off triple." Now, we think like I said, we as Mass fans, we hope that can be Jalen Brunson in the playoffs in the big moments and we we hope that it can be Spencer Dinwiddie. Right. The the reason I do have a little bit of hope, right? We've seen evidence already against playoff teams like the Warriors two weeks ago in which they were able to erase a 20-plus point deficit and go on a 27-6 to six some odd run with Luka off the floor. Right. right. So we know that this team, with the way that Jason Kidd has been able to kind of rein them back in from – he called them out early on in the season and said, this is one of the most pathetic defensive performances I've ever seen. They've, they've completely changed their identity. And that's the only thing to me that, you know, gives me a little bit of hope. It's not so much that I think they're contenders at all. It's just I think no, they, no. because they don't rely on the secondary superstar, they play so well collectively as a unit and on the defensive end of the floor. I think they Absolutely. might they might be You're a right. bit of a threat. So You're right. I was I was just going to say, man, the, the only way to counteract that is if you can play as a cohesive unit on the defensive Cohesively, end. yes. Yeah. Like, and, and Dallas just knows how to get stops. Like, it's going to be funny, man. I don't know where they're at as far as – uh, league-wide defensive rankings right now. I imagine they're in the top five. If not, they've got to be close. They've fallen and, off since they had gotten up to two. I know that. They're back right. towards, like, the middle of the top ten yeah. somewhere. Right, and they're still in the top ten. But it's it's mm-hmm. funny, man. I, whenever our, whenever everybody fills out their all-defensive team ballots, Dallas is not going to have a guy sniff any of those teams. They're just not. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's what makes their defense even more amazing is they don't have, like, a guy who you – like, Dorian Finney-Smith, you'd probably – I was like about to say – like, He's probably our best defender, but like he's not a yeah. stopper. They, yeah. They, I don't, and I don't know to the naked eye what they're doing. You'd have to ask an NBA coach who really understands the stuff that mm-hmm. they're running. But that's what makes it even more amazing is they're doing it right without that high end talent on the defensive end as well. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I would say I would say for sure Dorian Finney Smith. If not our second, it's probably a toss up between him and Jalen Brunson as far as just like who's the who's the second most important player on this team. I think Dorian Finney-Smith, if he's not number two, he's definitely number three. But that's that's exactly the, the the whole thing that makes it funny or ironic. With this club, man, how many people even know who Dorian Finney-Smith is that are just casual fans, right? We, that's kind of yeah. – like we want to appeal to that audience too. I hope we do, and I hope we make things easy to digest. But like that just kind of goes to show you this team is fun, man, because there's no egos really besides Luca, who's going to always be chirping at the refs no matter what. But that's what you – you get that when you're yeah, a top MVP. five player in the world, yeah. right? Yeah. Aside from that, man, it's like, you know, Spencer Dinwiddie, he doesn't have an ego. He's his own agent. He's a he's a keep to himself guy, you know? Like yeah. And like, that's that's that point, might be your number two score. I, I love that. I just love and he's been, what this team and brings. He's been playing good ball, but like and to yeah. your point, man, like I've I know Sam's been with me. I, I was admittedly down on Dallas. Mm-hmm. I just, like I, I just I didn't see it. And I bumped him up to a contender spot. Right, like they've and I, you know, I can't even hate on that. They've gotten legitimate Brooklyn net, maybe a tier below, like Spencer Dinwiddie. Like, he's been legit. And I think it's funny, man, because I, I was sitting here all year, and even after they got Dinwiddie and they've been playing amazing ball, like, I, you know, I joke with y'all and I call it their pretenders to me. But, like. <laughs> you call it Spencer's team. <laughs> right. But, like, when you when you think about last year, man, Luka Doncic has been one of the best playoff performers ever. And he's mm-hmm. I know he's only played two rounds, but he ran into Kawhi Leonard and Paul George in back to back years. And I don't Both care times. what anyone said. In my opinion, if Kawhi doesn't get hurt last year, they're going to the finals. I really thought think that Clippers team is going to the finals. No Luka, doubt. with that same porous ass defense, no Dinwiddie, took that team to seven games off sheer will. 
Like if you could have, the point I'm getting at is if you could have dropped Dimwitty on that team last year, maybe they probably like they probably Dallas win that is still series. playing, bro. Like yeah, like yeah. And then and then what? You know, they they probably would have had a shot against any of those teams. So to your point, man, I've been admittedly probably too low on Dallas. I I think they've you know they've got a shot. The West is wide open, especially when you consider the health of Ja Morant, Steph Curry. Yes. Like, Jaw's got knee soreness and he's he's out for two weeks. Like that, that kind of concerns me, man. Because we have knee soreness is up. is concerning. That's yes. scary. And Steph Curry, who knows? You know, everyone's like they play together. They're gonna be fine when he comes back. Okay, sure, Excuse theoretically. But how healthy is Steph? Like, yeah, we don't know what that's. And then, so I would say everyone outside of Phoenix, man, the West is wide open. Wide open. Yeah. With yeah. a and Draymond, Dallas, Draymond though. still isn't. He's not You're right. 100% yeah, he's either, not conditioned so. and back either. So yeah, with, with open, Dallas. Man. Um. We talked about star power a couple of podcasts ago. Um, they had the ultimate star power with with Luca. You're talking about. Yeah. I don't know if I'm taking anybody over him in the playoffs individually, except for LeBron in the entire league. I think that <clears throat> a man that that's dominates a, the that's ball. That's a strong statement too. Yeah, a man that for the listener. The I'm ball. saying when Hunter when Hunter says that, that means something to me. <laughs> yeah, he's not wrong. When he's, yeah, he's one of the best he's, playmakers in the world. Yep. A, a man that dominates the ball, can pass that well, gets the ball in his hands all the time because of rebounding. You're talking about a guy in his playoff career, and I, I believe 13 games it is, something like that, that he is averaging 34, 9, and 10. He has more 40 point, <laughs> as, crazy, as many or more 40 point games than Larry Bird, Tim Duncan, David Robinson, and I believe Kyrie Irving in his short term in the playoffs, his short yeah, just two year stint. 23, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So you're talking about a guy who can literally, and we saw it versus Kawhi Leonard and PG 13, who are renownedly talked about as the best two way players in the world, if not yeah. two of the top three. Yeah. That they guarded him every possession. And then when they started getting cooked, they started like, uh, Patrick Beverly, can he guard him? When he's going out there in literally a one man army winning you games, it scares me to see a dude that is so unselfish as to have Spencer Dinwiddie hit a shot and mm. and to win the game against the Nets. Against the Nets, yep. yep. To and score hit, that uh, well, one man army and bucket against Boston, over. who's the hottest exactly. team in the NBA. Like, yeah. I don't care what anybody says, man. Those Luka's shots, dog. like, Luka looks at those shots. Luka gains just as much confidence as Spencer does when he watches Spence hit that. For sure. Because he knows – Come playoffs when the game's getting tight in a game five, series tied 2-2, I trust that when I kick out the ball to Spencer Dinwiddie, he's going to make the right play. You know what I mean? That goes a I, long I way, I talked about man. that on my podcast. I said, uh, shouts out to Luka. In this, I trashed James Harden. Sorry. It's okay. And not this year's James Harden, just future James Harden, where he was stat padding with his assist. Really empty assist, uh, in my opinion. Uh, just the trustworthiness of Luca. You see him pass the ball to Dorian Finney-Smith with a minute left in the fourth quarter all the time to hit a corner three or to Dinwiddie or to even Dwight Powell on the elbow, whatever, to take the lead, whatever it is. He has real trust in his teammates, and he has no shame about it. So I give I give Luca credit in that instance. And, ho- and the unfortunate part is we're going to do the exact same thing that we did when LeBron passed to Donnell Marshall and – if and when the Mavs lose, we're gonna do the same bullshit that we always do. Will we're they? Pick, we're gonna we're gonna pick apart. We're gonna. Pick I don't apart, think they will. We're gonna because he did it with Luka. Dinwiddie. We're gonna pick apart Luca making the right play, and it's gonna suck because everybody wants disgusting. You to, everybody wants you yeah. to die with the ball in your hands. Like it's just the way that national it, discourse goes, and it's disgusting. I was guilty of it. This was, 15, you know, 12, 13 years ago. You know, I was a child at that point, but <laughs> like he. You know, he, they really are making the right play, man. You don't – just because you're amazing doesn't mean you are required by law to hoist a horrendous one-legged jumper over a double team from 21 feet out. Like, it's just a stupid basketball play. So, hopefully he doesn't yeah. get picked apart like that. But I think he will. But, you know, I, but I don't know because he's not – he's still a young player, and LeBron really didn't get dissected with his clutch yeah. stuff until he was about 27, 20 – same, same with Giannis. Same yeah. With Giannis. Same yeah. with Giannis. Last year, if they didn't get it done, yeah. They were, t- you know, Giannis, in my opinion, leaves Milwaukee. They don't win at all last year. You can call me uh, crazy. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I think those rumblings were, like, kind of real. Like, the Heat were kind of waiting around. Like, some teams were kind of like, oh, oh man, it's Milwaukee. Like, oh, those rumors. 
they ain't got shit else to offer. So if they ain't winning, the, if the basketball team in Milwaukee ain't winning, why the hell is he staying around? So you yeah, good he, over there, Lando? Got some time, but yeah, I'm trying to get this uh, this other camera back up and running. But y'all are good. I'm listening. Yeah, I think uh, I think that. That wraps up that portion. I don't know what the question was right there. We just kind of got going, but <laughs> that was good. it was uh, who to, can beat Phoenix? Me, and... Right to me, it's like Phoenix has got to be the hands on. They're a sixty win team, man. They were on a they were on a sixty eight win average, pace. But... They were on a sixty eight win pace with Chris Paul. Yep, sixty eight, bro. That's five wins so... off the all time record. Like Phoenix is the heavy favorite. They were on a sixty eight win pace. Is that what you said before Chris, Chris Paul's Paul. injury? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. yeah. And again, so it's like it's not you know kind of held in the same breath as the seventy three and nine Warriors team, right? But again, we talked about the disparity, the difference between one and two. It's like they're outclassing the rest of the NBA this year in a way that we haven't seen since the two thousand two thousand one Lakers. Right, like yeah, so, Memphis is number two, and no one's giving Memphis a chance if and when yeah. they match up in the playoffs. Like every, everybody's picking Phoenix, and rightfully so. So it's like it right. just goes to show how far ahead of the competition they are. Yeah, that's wild stuff. So I'll be also remiss. I did want to just throw the question out there to Hunter. Uh, he's obviously been <laughs> – he's let it eat on his podcast with the rant as far as what the Heat are doing right now. He's been grieving, y'all. Show the guy some sympathy. Please. Yeah, and it's his birthday tomorrow too, so it's a tough time for the kid. But currently are, – are the Heat the two seed currently? Yeah. And – all there's 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 stuff happening all over the place. We got we got we got Jimmy Spolstra and Udonis Haslam about to fight each other. We got the Heat just getting blown out all over the place. Like what what do my question was, and then I'll let you take it. What has Victor Oladipo ruined the flow with that team since his return after uh, how many months of injury? What's uh, yeah, what's the deal with, with that with that squad? So I'm gonna let you go real quick. I just want to tell the audience. They lost to the Sixers without Joel Embiid and James Harden. This is all in a week span. Get to that. Go ahead. I, I'll, let, I'll let you roll. They had a three-and-a-half game lead in first place. They lost to the Tyrese Maxey-led Sixers, the G League Jordan Poole-led Warriors, the G League because their entire team sucks, Knicks, and then tonight they lost by 15, but it was a 30-point game to the Nets. So with We that, lost I by 15? Wanna, yeah, 110-95. I didn't see the end. Didn't check the sign, score. I want to – I'll, I'll give you the floor with that. I just want the audience to know how big of an influx and a downfall the heater in right now. I'm hoping Landon gets in here before I start my point. Uh, one, the thing that Landon said about how we're getting blown, uh, blown out all over the place is one of the most disrespectful first, comments first I've ever first heard. Of all, first of all, listen, first listen, of all listen. that was one of those disrespectful comments I've ever heard. <laughs> Second of all, yes. I believe Joel Embiid or Joe. I mean, I'm I'm stuck on other teams. I'm on team. That the wagon, bro. We got is, is, yo, Lane's oh, joining us two different oh, people got, right now. What is Hagen, happening? Hagen's about to log on from the room, man. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I heard Hagen. What I'm in. Oh my What's god. Up? You're logging in as two different people right now. My computer's tweaking. Are we still live? Yes, yes, we're going. Okay, yeah, we're so live. Uh, I would like to let it be known. We talked about at the very beginning, uh, life changes, man. So y'all all got two pretty big things happening, right? We mentioned those. I, I got another big thing, finally. Much Outside bigger. of being a dad, I'm getting a new laptop. So this shit won't happen anymore, hopefully, in the future. Stay with, stay with us, folks. Yeah. So bear bear with us here. We're uh... So can continue my point? Yes, please. Okay. So, yes, Depot is – one, Landon, I said that you saying that we got blown out all over the place is absolutely disrespectful. That's the nuttiest Pause. thing I've ever heard, even though it's Pause. true. Um, but, yeah, Victor Oladipo is ruining, absolutely ruining chemistry. Not ruining chemistry. He's not the reason the chemistry is ruined. He's the reason why we're not playing our best, though. Does that make sense? I call He this. has come in. Max Struess is out here playing 15 to 20 minutes every night, putting up 12 to 18 points. Now Max Struess is playing 8 to 12, not doing a damn thing, while Victor Oladipo no is rhythm. giving us nothing. He's giving us nothing. He's giving us a good shitty goose egg most of the time. Just <laughs> and then And then we just keep What's putting up, him in. 
we're giving him pity minutes. We're giving him these, oh, he was injury prone. Give him pity minutes. It's as if he's KD coming off a, a huge injury that we have to play the guy. Like Victor Oladipo has been game. relevant in the league for the <laughs> last three years. No offense. He's on my team. I root for him. Hope you're healthy, Vic. Hope you're healthy. But you need to sit your ass down and let the team ball. You need to let the team ball because I'm losing my shit. I I walked around at work today, and I literally just say to myself, holy shit, the Heat suck. I, I just started talking to myself, like, why is Depot get so many minutes? Why do we suck so bad? He's and ever the, since Victor Oladipo... Hey, pause real quick. Depot, pause. You got you to gotta insert that uh, the clip that you posted on your Snapchat right here, right now in this video. Right, right, right here. Right. Here's my clip Damn, about Victor Oladipo. Bang. I'm just okay, saying, bro, and we're back. We got a little Go bit ahead. of room before the playoffs start. If you, like... I'm extending an invite. <laughs> this man said, like, "I'm extending an out, invite bro. if you would like to jump." But I digress. you go think ahead. I'm gonna jump on your no, bandwagon no, no, no. when you got two go playoff choke artists on your team? No, no. You got a dude go who's put up 14 offer, against bro. the damn Raptors, and then James we're, Harden, a dude. He's got every out. statistical category above D Wade. The only reason D Wade's <laughs> above him because he actually shows up and puts his jersey on during the playoffs. I am mad. I'm so mad at it. Y'all, y'all have lit a fire <laughs> in my ass. I'm so oh, mad. Man. Like I was just thinking, I was sitting here watching the Arkansas game, and luckily I was watching the Arkansas game while watching the Heat game. So I had another team to care about that we were gonna lose. Like I was gonna care about another team that was gonna lose the ones uh, by thirty, the other ones only by fifteen. You know, cut it in half. I didn't know what to do. I, I the Heat suck, man. We <laughs> lost four in a row. <laughs> And we suck. I don't know what to tell you. You're talking about the Adonis Haslam Spo thing. Cool. Jimmy Butler came out. Did he respond? Well, I don't know. He put up 30 <laughs> points, seven rebounds, and seven assists. We still lost to the Knicks. We got outscored by 25 in the fourth quarter, up 17 by the Knicks. The Knicks are unwatchable. <laughs> They're not yeah. even going to make the playoffs. They barely got 30 mm. wins on the season. They are, they are unwatchable. Y'all were anybody up else talking about the heat? Go ahead. Y'all are up we're up by 17 to 4. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, anybody oh. else wants to go, you can go talk about my shitty squad. I'll take all the licks. Something about your two teams, bro. Your name starts with an H. And, well, never mind. That doesn't exactly work. Razorback starts the with an R. But if we call them the hogs, hogs and the, in heat, the heat, bro. The Triple H ain't flowing so hot right now, bro. I don't know. I don't know what has to change. Bro, I, I don't. D- like, who would have thought that we'd be sitting here on this pod and the Heat would be a step below the other two teams in here, man? I'm just saying, it's it's, it's a good time to be great. Wild, right now, wild times out here. A but step? we're staring I mean, the hogs. A couple stories right now, bro. Uh, escalator? A couple flights right now. Yeah, I'm talking I'm dying I'm talking inside. 21st floor. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll jump in here for a sec. I, I don't, I, I say it's not time to panic. You. <laughs> like shit, he's man. he's clearly like, panicking. We're, we're being real, I'm like high I'm, noons and fucking. I'm definitely got a hat on halfway. I'm dying. I'm definitely worried. Now you are only you know you're a half game out of first, right? Like Philly, we, we were just at four games like three, three days ago. Yesterday. Yeah. Okay. We've, Talk about Philly. pseudo tanking to dodge the nets. By the way, for that one seat, which that's going to help you cope. Trust me, because. When we were starting to go like this, I use the same method, man. So you you gotta you gotta latch on to whatever logic. Unless you we can. get the two seed and they get the exactly. seven seed exactly. by winning the play in, and they are and then the I die. Seed. And, <laughs> and then I literally will die. They are getting the seven seed. One, yeah, they're they getting are. the seven seed. One thousand. They're going to beat yeah. the breaks off either Cleveland or Chicago, whichever poor team falls in there. They're going to be Kyrie the officially there. back for all home games. Yeah, too, exactly. So. Yes, Kyrie's officially back. So. I have done a full switch in a matter of two days. We are now gunning in Philadelphia for the number one seed. <laughs> Keep me away from the two. There we Keep go. me out of there, man. Honestly, I won't be upset if, like, let you know, like, let Boston have the two, man. If they're as good as everyone says they are, let Boston have the two, man. Let those two teams duke it out. Hey, real quick, Please. real quick, before you before you keep rapping, uh, explain for anyone out there that doesn't understand the play-in system. Explain that real real fast. There might be a couple people out there that are like, shit, what's the plan again? I forget, I forget. Go through that real fast if you can. Yes, yeah, so the the play-in is the 7th or 10th seed in each conference. 
Right. They added this, I think, two years ago. Newly implemented. Which, yeah. Newly implemented. LeBron James had some words for the for the playing guy, and now he's <laughs> and now he now now LeBron's I doing this, too. man. Like, thank you for giving yeah. me an opportunity. But um, the the seven seed plays the eight seed. The seven seed hosts the game, so it's played in their their territory for a while. It's been Toronto in the seven hole, and Kyrie is still unable to play in Toronto, regardless of the New York backs. So there were some people kind of thinking that Brooklyn was going to play Toronto in the seven eight, and. The 9-10 also play. The 9 seed hosts that game. The winner of the 7-8 gets the 7 seed. The loser of the 7-8 game plays the winner of the 9-10 game for the 8 seed. So okay. you've got two spots up for grab with four teams battling for it. The thought okay. process is, to Sam's point, was that Brooklyn's going to play Toronto, like I said, with their Vax rules in Canada. Kyrie's not going to play. Toronto should have enough to beat them. Toronto gets the 7 seed. And then Brooklyn proceeds to beat the brakes off Charlotte or Atlanta or whoever's remaining, and they I walk into the I think Kevin Durant's winning either of them. And yeah, yeah, they're beat, even without Kyrie. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if he beats Toronto. He might, though. He's Kevin Durant. Like, you, you know who I he is. I think he will. So the thought process, though, has been that Brooklyn is probably going to get in the eight hole, and so it's kind of been all hands on deck, fire alarm, avoid the one seed at all costs. Now Toronto's okay. jumped up. Go ahead, Leonard. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, but one other question. This is this is something that I actually hadn't considered until just now. So, forgive the lack of foresight. But they the whole adding in and and deve- the the newly implementation of the play in right that was to discourage teams from tanking as much as possible. Give a few a couple extra teams some more viability late in the season. Maybe we got a shot to get into the playoffs and, you know, get that playoff atmosphere, that experience for our, for our younger players, help with development, better product, right? All the, all the whole nine yards. Why would they implement that system and allow for some still like a tank, a tank ish mentality? Like why would they reward a team like a nine seed to host a, a, a quote unquote playoff game? Why wouldn't the seven play the 10 and the eight play the nine? I don't understand that. It's a good question. Honestly, I think there's there's a lot. I have no idea. I have no idea either. I've actually been seeing – I know Zach Lowe has posed this. He thinks with the play-in format currently, he thinks that maybe the one and two seed should get to pick their opponent. And that like that kind of broke my brain because you, you scratch and claw and battle all year. And for a scenario like this or Phoenix last year, regardless of what anyone thinks, I think the Lakers beat the Suns last year if AD's healthy. Like, Phoenix battled and played their ass off. They earned the two seed, similar to this year in the East. You've earned the two or the one. Yeah. It was kind of – you can maybe just chalk it up to shit luck and injuries and Kyrie's back status and what have you. But right. it, does, because it does feel kind of gross to battle for all that. And then, oh, here's Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, bud. Good luck in the first round. Yeah. So, I agree with that. I could see that being a thing. And then, also, I just wanted to add, like – to further explain what my what I'm curious about, what I don't understand is if you're trying to discourage tanking, if that's the thinking, right? To be probably an oversimplification, but if if that's the gist, why would an eight seed who would have to potentially go on the road for a play in say, okay, let me try to tank these last couple of games and get the nine seed so that I can host one? You, you see what I'm saying? Like that's where that's kind of odd to me. I don't really understand that. So I I'll think- have to look deeper. Me personally, I don't think that's ever going to be a case. Sands can attest to this too because when you end up in the nine slot, you're one loss away from going home. Whereas if you fall in the seven, eight hole, you at least get two two cracks at the apple. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, I can see so that. Okay. I don't, I don't think anyone's ever going to intentionally try to end up in the nine hole just because anything could, anyone could beat anyone on any given night in the NBA. And you really don't yeah. want to take that chance. Right. But yeah, to your point, I think. It's encouraged people to stop tanking. Like, you look at the Lakers, man. The Pelicans are in the play-in right now. They're 12 games under 500. 12. The Lakers are yeah. 11 games under 500. They're 31 and 43, they're, and they still have a shot to make the playoffs. Like, it's kind of crazy. But – Yeah. And yeah, what team ahead. wants to see LeBron in a one-game play-in? Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Good luck with that. Okay. So, interesting interesting stuff there. Good, good, good discussion right there. Uh, 